Welcome back to Satisfactory. Ah, so much to do. Um, things are getting out of hand with this uh, factory of mine. But first of all, let's go through the um, the uh, MAM stuff that I've done since the previous episode. So first of all, under the oh, under the uh, Caterium node, I finally done with that as well. I've finished the Caterium research, so I have researched the geothermal generator. We'll uh, take a quick drive out to take a look at that. And I've also uh, researched the power poles Mark III and the programmable splitter. Now, these I can't really, uh, the power poles, I don't produce those um, high-speed connectors yet, nor do I produce the supercomputers nets yet, so I don't think I can build those as of now. The geothermal generator, I, um, I got the supercomputers for these researchers, also the uh, high-speed connector, I got that from the Fix-It shop, or the awesome shop, because... When I was finished with the uh, parts for the uh, space elevator, which I haven't launched yet, of course, I chugged those things into an awesome sink, which netted me around 60 or so tickets or coupons. So, yeah. But, yeah, let's continue with the man. I also uh, got the um, radar technology. So I've built a couple of radar, radars, not raiders, and I got the uh, radio signal scanning. Then I went out and uh, had some fun in the wilds and collected a few hard drives. So I got five more inventory slots from one of them. And then I got the alternate blueprints for pure caterium ingot, the iron wire, that's probably going to be very useful. Um, I got the high-speed wiring. Because there simply was no better option. The other one was the um, smart plating alternate recipe. And the third one was charcoal. Which I do not have any intentions of making charcoal from wood. And then I got the uh, recipe for coated cable and the recipe for turbo fuel. Um, in the fix it shop, I have. Well, uh, first of all, I still have 16 coupons left, and I should have a few more in the uh, sink over there. I got all of the walls, so I got the. Uh, I guess it's uh, the. They do look like wood, but at the same time, I don't think they're wood. I think they're more like um, copper, even though these, these say metal. They, they do have a certain coppery tinge to them, or maybe brass or bronze. I got these, the conveyor walls. I got the door walls, and then I got the windowed walls. I haven't tested these yet. Um, I wonder what they look like. We should uh, take a look at that. Uh, on the attachments, I got all of these. I should get the uh, Mark III wall power, power poles at some point, but I'm, for now I'm just saving the coupons because I might need to buy equipment or parts. On the foundations, I got the uh, quarter pipes pack, and apparently they also added more inverted ramps, so I had to rebuy this. So now they have inverted ramps for uh, a lot more than just the uh, 8x4 regular inverted ramp. Um, let's see... Still haven't got the uh, Fix-It factory cart. This one... Yeah. No, that, that seems to be it. Um, do keep in mind that you can buy things here, like gas filters and beacons, explosives, parachutes. That they're, they're, You get... I think this is a fair price for these things. Some of them might even be under uh, underpriced, like 25 filters for uh, one coupon is... Uh, I'd, I'm not sure why you would even bother making them. 
just buy them. Explosives, on the other hand, and uh, cartridges, those I think are worth um, manufacturing. The health packs, not sure. Parachutes, uh, I don't use them very often. The parts, there are certain parts that are uh, nice to get, like the AI limiter was nice to get in here. Same with the high-speed connector. And also the um, supercomputer. But the supercomputer is pretty expensive. It was worth it for not having to wait around for 30 minutes handcrafting those things, though, because the, uh, those things... It's several thousand quick wire to, to make 50 of them. I think it's like 10,000 or something. So, yeah. Okay. Um, now, you might be wondering what the heck is going on here. This is my ongoing project, and this is going to take extensive amount of time. So, I've converted all of these containers into industrial storage containers, and I've also uh, upgraded the uh, screws belt to a Mark IV belt and removed the belt up there so that the screws only come into one of the containers now instead of two. And uh, I still have upgrading to do when it comes to Mark IV belts. A lot of it, to be honest. Uh, it also applies to these um, iron rods. They are coming from the uh, steel rod factories over at the... Uh, steel outpost which would be behind that manufacturer somewhere over there um these can just be one belt i might move it down one and have it uh, beside here in this open space instead of having it in one of these and again it is handy to be able to walk th uh, through this long line of containers now all of these are and this is a, a, a useful tip um, when you build a splitter, if you have it three steps away, so make sure you have the line one, two, three, like that, that is exactly what you need in spacing for a lift, for it to directly connect from the container or whatever to the, uh, to the, um, splitter. Or merger. This also applies to conveyor poles. So one, two, three. And now I can build. I think it's like that. Yep. And now I can build a lift like that. Normally I would just tear down the conveyor pole again if I were to do this. But uh, yes, uh, the lift itself. Um, when it is attached like that, it looks like it's giving some weight to the, uh, I don't know, construction. Then again, they are definitely flying. Now, that is also why I have these um, splitters standing here. All of them are three apart. So I'm going to use these to, when I need to take things off, this is to get the green line. So that I know that, okay, if I place a splitter here and I take it up, like, uh, say, for instance, uh, three, if I wanted to have uh, belts going out from it like that. Now I could use a lift uh, here and connect it to that. I won't do that because I don't want the um, steel pipes to come out yet. So the thing here, though, is... Now that's why I've torn everything away, and that's also why I haven't completed it, is I need to think. So I've made a visual diagram, which I sadly can't show you because the visual diagram has actually been drawn by hand. Imagine that, using pen and paper in these modern times. So I'm using a visual diagram to see where the lines go out, but I also need to uh, account for more lines. But this one is so close to the uh, hub that I'm going to run it all the way out here. So this one, those three products, Caterium Wire, Wire, and I don't remember what the last one was. I would have to go, I think it was Steel Pipes. Yep, Steel Pipes. That one uh, will be on the, uh, it's the sixth um, 
lane, I guess we can call it a lane. Yeah, sure. Then I also have this little conundrum up here, which um, I built. The reason why I built it like this is simply because I had to go up to get it above the terrain. Mainly due to this hill and this thing. I was hoping that this thing could be removed with a nobelisk, but no such luck. So, and this area up here, this thing used to be connected, but then I figured that, okay, I have to redesign the entire output from the, the mall to get this correct. So, this manufacturer is creating beacons, but I probably will move it, uh, because I need the belts to come up here somewhere. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this. The other things that I'm going to create up here are uh, AI limiters. I'm going to make uh, compacted coal. And with the compacted coal, I'm also going to make fine black powder. And then I'm going to create cartridges and nobelisks. So this area will be for minor things that I need, but that I don't really need to have bust around the base that much well beacons is something and it's also ai limiters so those i need to to store in the mall but uh the other things are uh things that i'm only going to pick up manually myself then i have built two radars i probably they are probably too close to one another i wish the radars did more than just discover the terrain on the map um i mean if they could show me, like, monsters or what I've actually built in the terrain, that would have been much more useful than their current state. But I guess it is useful to discover terrain as well. However, they can only discover things that is below their... You'd think that one is below, but it isn't. So I guess it has to be below the base of the radar. Uh, and this mesa over here is probably too far away from this radar tower over here to get discovered. That I don't know what's up there, but because I do. Um, let's start with the, uh, the fun part, which is driving the explorer. Oh, wait. Um, let's get up to the uh, space elevator and uh, stash the items into the space elevator. Someone told me that you don't need to feed the stuff in via the belt. Thank you for that. So I have 350 modular engines. So let's just stash them in. Seal. And send. And this always fascinates me. I wonder why this thing doesn't require power. Because that to me seems like it would need an immense amount of power. Now we're at the point where we can't get any further because this is now unavailable in early access. Um, let's refuel. And let's check out what our new technology options are. Okay, so we have bauxite refinement. This is something that we should probably unlock very quickly. Uh, gives us Mark V belts. Those are nice. I expect that they will require the Alclad aluminium sheets. Um, we get bauxite refining. And... Then... I'm not sure how the aluminium um, refining actually works, but I think you have to do it in refineries. 
you have to mine the bauxite and then you have to make that into a luminous solution um which you then get aluminium scrap from and that you melt down into ingots which you can then refine into alclad aluminium sheets yeah uh, i think that's about the process uh, i might have one of the steps or two of the steps wrong but that's what i think vaguely remember based on what i've entered into my spreadsheet then we have advanced aluminium production which gives us minor mark threes that's going to be handy uh that means we can get a mine to actually uh sheesh well if the mark five belt is 780 then 190 percent overclock on a mine should fill up i think it's 190 maybe 180 should fill up one of these belts but you can actually get it up to 960 1200 something that is immense uh we get heat sinks we get turbo motors we get batteries we also get the hazmat suit which means we can uh go into radiation i don't know if the hazmat suit with the iodine infused filters works to go into um, the poison fields but uh that is of no consequence. Nuclear power. We get the nuclear power plant. Then we can make nuclear fuel rods out of electromagnetic control rods, encased uranium cells, uranium pellets. Of course, we need sulfuric acid to uh, extract the uranium, or at least to, to use it for something. I guess you make uranium pellets with a process of uranium ore together with sulfuric acid and i guess that is then transformed into uranium cells which is or encased uranium cells which is then transformed into fuel rods not sure about the control rods tier 8 nothing here so these are the four final technologies we can research and to get these i this one I can unlock immediately. I have all the parts. So let's just um, get that done. Select this milestone. Now the other ones, I cannot unlock that one. I cannot unlock that one. And I can definitely not unlock this one yet. But bauxite refinement, let's get that. So we need to go fetch some uh, motors. Tum tum tum. No, I'm not going to climb that. We need 200 of these. We need a few computers. And we need some tactical bore cubes. Now, the belt from the manufacturer is empty because I haven't connected the belts with the raw materials. There we go jump over that not sure if this is what it going what it's going to look like uh, in the end but for now that's what i've built and um, i'm generally content with it, what it looks like right now but that area will probably uh, require some uh, rework oof milestone reached Quartz and bauxite scanning unlocked. A new generation of basic aluminum parts is now available, which can be constructed from bauxite after a complex process of refinement. Additionally, improved conveyor belts and lifts can now be constructed. It's aluminium, Ada, not aluminum. Um, let's see. Yeah, surprise, surprise. They require the alclad aluminium sheets. Okay, let's uh, take a quick swing to the other uh, mini-mall. I intend to extend the the, uh, the mall over there with uh, the more advanced products. What's going on with the car? But on our way there, let's just uh, have a look at this. So instead of having the crystal oscillators go through the entire base, 
I am instead transporting them down underneath the base. Now, we can follow that by going down here. And as you can see, I've uh, modified this area to have the copper ore come in at the... Uh, this would be level 2. Then the uh, crystal oscillators follow this belt. And out here you will notice that I have modified this area as well. Now the products that go up to the minimal go over there and they are then lifted up. And the crystal oscillators are lifted up here. And I've built this so that it should be possible for me to lift up things based on the height of the conveyor in a row. Sorry about that jerky movement. I've built as many containers as this platform can uh, support, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of these. Chest here that I probably should uh, do stuff with, but I can do that later. And then I'm doing the same thing here, which is why you have all these uh, splitters hanging around. Um, so the, the crystal oscillators, I uh, noticed that I'm not going to use crystal oscillators for... I don't think I'm going to use them for much at all. So that's why I'm taking them out there, lifting them up two levels and getting them off to where they belong. I haven't emptied this container yet. This is the container that I use to store the, um, the engines for the um, space elevator. So I just filled it with uh, steel beams so that I could get 300 in here and then the 50 that were in the machine so that I wouldn't be using unnecessary power. And the other belt is transporting the quartz crystals that are being used in the process of making the crystal oscillators. I will do the same thing with the, uh, the motors, I think. I don't know if there is room under there. Um, but I will definitely do it with the uh, Borg, uh, the tactical Borg cubes and the computers. I will transport them down below the base and then up underneath and into the containers in that mall over there. Now let's uh, have a quick drive out to the um, uh, geothermal generator. I was a bit disappointed uh, that one of the nodes out here at least in my save, is bugged, so I couldn't place two of them, even though there are two nodes. But it looks very cool. Now I'm driving the wrong way. Did that wasp nest... Have they fixed that now? Not sure. I have a wasp nest that usually spawns here, even though this place is definitely populated with lots of stuff going on, so I'm not sure what that's about. So we need to get up here. And then we have to go above this. I don't know what to call this. Rocky outcropping. Physically impossible thing. And... We need to auto-save the game, apparently. Here is the uh, the two geysers that is in this area. And one of them is sadly bugged. I don't know if I have the parts required to... Uh... No, I don't. So this is the ge geothermal generator. It looks awesome. I, I really like it. But... It's a tad disappointing in terms of the power output but it's very much a work in progress as you can see early access warning menu does not work as intended does produce power check power pole instead <laughs> i like that uh, it produces 200 megawatts so it is definitely useful probably should clean up that as well i don't think i'm ever going to need to go up there again now that i'm here what is up, what is up here was it a hard drive? Probably. I don't think I would bother going up on the top of a mountain like this or a mesa unless there was a hard drive. Yep. 
There was a hard drive, and there's also a big spitter. Evil space goat, so... I'm just gonna dismantle all of this, and... Uh, go back to... Uh, I don't know if we're gonna go back to the base. Yes, we are going to go back to the base. I don't have anything else to show that I've done in between episodes now. Um, most of what I'm doing now is extremely menial work. The uh, upgrading of belts, removing belts that are no longer in use, overclocking some miners. I am going to have to overclock some coal. Thank you, Rock. I'm going to have to overclock some uh, some coal miners. I'm not sure if I'm going to overclock the pure coal miner or if I'm just going to overclock two of the normal ones. But to create the compacted coal, I need both coal and uh, sulfur. But I have plenty of sulfur coming in, 240, so... And each of the uh, compacted coal um, assemblers need 25 of each and produces 25 compacted coal, so... I can get a lot of that with the sulfur I already have. And that's not even with an overclocked... Uh, I don't even have the sulfur miners overclocked, so I could actually produce 480 instead of uh, 240. Why is this flying around here? Probably for one of my cleanup sessions. So, let's have a look quickly if there is room for... Um, I think this is where I store the computers. How does it look underneath here? Uh, this should work. Yep, I can get the computers down there. Um, mm. Let's change these foundations. I do like that you can remove the foundations underneath things. Like the power pole, po power pole, <coughs> power pole is now just floating in nothing, and replace them with eight by two foundations. Uh, there, and then I need a ramp to get back up. Uh, I don't think that's the correct spot. I think actually this would be the correct spot. Let's continue to remove foundations. Why am I doing this manually when I... or one by one? That is something that I actually do regret a little bit, that I didn't use the 8x2 foundations on the entire base, but... <laughs> I have enough to do if I'm not going to have to uh, replace all of the foundations of the base. So I'm going to replace the ones that I need and no more. Um, before I go, let's build... No, I can't. Okay, let's just build some walkway crossings in here then. I'd rather not fall down. Let's check the same with the, uh, Borg, uh, the tactical Borg cubes. I'm not sure that it will be possible to do it here. I think these foundations are pretty much on solid ground. It might work. Actually, it will work. I just need to replace a lot of foundations with the 8x2s. Um, however, it must be there, and I don't think I want to remove the foundations underneath the car. So let's remove the foundation here. Do I, Am I going to have more than one of these? I wonder. Well, I can always take them this way and then go around and down. Let's build a few of these. And instead of building those uh, walkway crossings, I can just build a... Uh, no. No, I'll, I'll build the walkway crossings. Or rather, here I can do fences. Since the container isn't in the way. Mm. 
Now... A lot of these containers are going to go away. And that is because... Like, these two are... I'm probably going to move those one more. But these are for computers, tactical board cubes, circuit boards, stators. The sulfur one isn't going to go away, but I think I might just move it up there because that's up, up there is where I'm going to use the sulfur, not down here. So getting it from down here up there is just impractical. But all of the advanced products are going to be stored over at the other uh, minimal, so I don't see a reason for why I should uh, bother uh, having them in two locations. Not when I'm making these... Uh, well, rather intricate lanes to get things out of these containers. Um, was there anything else? I've shown off the... Caterium. I probably will have to overclock that as well. I'm not sure if I've shown the modifications I've done to the hypertube network. I've straightened these out a bit. Now there's a lot more clipping. And I also got the hypertube wall connector over there, as you probably saw. And then these are now st completely straight, instead of being crooked all the way. But this, in my opinion, I feel that this looks better. Same with this one. And this is uh, a result of me learning about the uh, vertical mode of uh, building uh, pipes and uh, hypertubes. So, I'm not sure if I want this one to look like that, but um, ah, it's fine. The radar I just built on top of that uh, mountain top to get it as high as I would bother. Um, for some reason I'd forgotten to connect power to this one. Not that I am in dire need of concrete anytime soon. Yes, there is plenty of things that I've done. One thing that I... I don't know if I should make an episode out of it. We're nearing the end of this one. This has been a lot of showing things. Um... But I, I think that maybe I will make an episode out of uh, the connecting and, and planning and building of this lane system that I have here. Because I suspect that some people might find that um, not educational, at least useful. So... I will probably test doing things off camera and when I when I'm satisfied with with uh, what I'm do doing so oh, welcome back I will um, make an episode out of that I think but the things up there probably will just build them off camera but first of all, what I have to do is uh, redo the lanes and upgrade the belts. Now, for some of the belts, like the screws, um, those should definitely come in on a Mark V belt, but I'm not going to uh, go do any uh, bauxite uh, refining yet. How far is it to the nearest bauxite node, I want? Right away, okay, so there is one 865 meters that way, and there is one 1,000, okay. Well, let's have a drive out to the one that is 800 meters away and have a look at what that one is. So let's scan again. Uh, 
I am a bit worried that that is on top of the mountain there. In fact, I have a sneaking suspicion as to exactly where that node is. And if it is where I think it is, then that's not at all an ideal spot for it. Two hundred. Yeah, there it goes. Oh, here. Yeah, no, that's not fun at all. It's on top of that outcropping. I was up there to get the hard drive at the very end of the outcropping. I was wondering what that node was, but didn't think more about it. I don't even know if it's a pure one. Yep, it's definitely up there. Sigh. 549 meters that way. It's probably also on the top of something. If I stand here, am I close enough that I'll see the uh, green blip? Yes, it's up there. So I have three of them up on the top of the mountains here. I don't know if I can even get up to that one. Wasps. Is this too steep? Come on, can you do it? Okay, cannot do it. How about there then? No. Here? Oh. Here then. Ah. Uh. Come on, you can do it, car. I like that I can drive sideways. You can do it, come on. Up we go. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Come on. Running out of It was worth the try though. Refuel now. Not today, Wasp. Not today. Okay, I'll go check out those uh, bauxite nodes off camera. Uh, I don't think that's very um, interesting uh, on the scale of, for instance, uh, doing the lane work on the uh, mall. But for now, I think that that's uh, an excellent place to uh, end this episode. Uh, this was very much a tour and look at things episode. Caledon points and looks at things. But I hope that you enjoyed it nonetheless. And... There. Nah, yeah, no. So if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comment field as usual. And thank you so much for joining me. I will see you all next time.